Now, the plane tracking service Flight Radar 24 suggests that the aircraft deviated from its usual route. It went much further south than the other airliners passing over Ukraine, flying directly over the combat zone. It's unclear why it took that path. And this isn't the only unusual circumstance this surrounding the disaster. Let's get more now from uh, wireless communications professor uh, Misha Dola, Professor, thanks so much for um, joining us. I'd like to start, if I may, with the latest development. Now, that's that media agencies are now citing a source in the Malaysian Airlines uh, saying that the Ukrainian air traffic controllers directed the plane to fly at a lower height than originally requested. I is that a particularly strange request? Why would you s uh, guess that they would do that? Well, you know, I'm not an aviation expert, but it's certainly unusual that that request was made. I agree with that. And uh, particularly having very unusual circumstances with the previous flight a few months back, um, which we haven't solved yet. OK, what about the, um, the fact that the Malaysian plane was going over a combat zone? That surprised a lot of people. I just wondered what, what you think about that. And to, to the members of the public, that would seem like a risky thing to do. It would surprise people that would actually happen. It seems it seems quite common, actually. I've been quite a lot in planes which flew over, you know, combat zones, and I was thinking to myself, it's a bit of a risky thing to do. But uh, in this particular circumstance, it what is actually suspicious is that the plane has deviated from a route it typically takes, which seems to be now very, very different from uh, a flight just the day before. OK, now, um, the suspicion at the moment that's going around is that the jet was um, shot down by the Buk surface-to-air missile system. Now, this is a, a system that can reach targets at an altitude of up to 25 kilometres. Uh, the missiles can travel at 1,200 metres per second. Um, I mean, it is a speculation, but it's one that lots of people are latching onto. Does that seem very likely to you? It's probably the most likely case, uh, given the video footage of the self-propelled um, rocket is real and is authentic. If, if that's the case, that probably was actually shot down. Now, to really verify that, we would need the radar signatures of uh, the Russian Ukrainians and maybe the US who is covering the whole military space there, because that's the only thing which would really confirm that an object has been flying at a high speed towards the airplane. OK, that, that takes us on probably to the most important question, which is that um, would it actually be possible to establish for sure uh, where the missile came from um, because the most important thing is going to be to clarify was it launched by the army or was it launched by the opposition if this happened yes so there are different ways of doing that the, the easiest way of doing it is if you look at the video you have uh, you determine the angle of the self-propelled um, rocket and you know more or less where it actually has departed from. But you can use the shadow of the sun to determine from which directions actually come. So that's a, a very rough indication. And my guess is I've done a little bit of calculus. It's coming probably from the eastern, from the eastern border, um, not from Russia, though. Um, the really rigorous method, though, would be to look at the radar traces, which I'm sure all the Russian and the Ukrainian militaries keep because they're trying to protect their airspace. OK, well, in that case, it'd be fascinating to see what kind of information uh, in that realm uh, appears in the future then. Thanks so much for joining us, though. That's wireless communications professor Misha Dole. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you.